All right. Uh, we, we, we talked to them today. I think we're live. Yep. What's up, guys? This is the Beyond Celebrity Show. I'm your host, Cesar Pena. And we got the co-host, producer extraordinaire, Miguel Sanchez. What's up, everybody? So today's show is going to be different. You know, you guys, a lot of you guys know about me and stuff like that and, and what I've been through and everything like that. Of course, every week I, I reveal more. It's like peeling an orange. I'm taking out layers and layers of what, you know, onion, you know, layers and layers of who I am. Um, but I want you guys to know who Miguel is, right? So we're going to ask Miguel some questions. And, you know, first thing, you know, Miguel, um, a lot of these fans, of course, they're in the entertainment business, stuff like that. But just let them know what your background is and like what, like, what do you do? So my background is I started out in the entertainment industry as a, as a technologist and a designer. Um, I was a, I graduated high school in New York City, and then I went and I interned for a record label called Loud Records, showing my age. <laughs> <laughs> Loud Records had Big Pun, uh, Wu-Tang Clan, uh, Mob Deep, every, every, most of the big groups, they were at Loud Records, and I was an intern right after high school, and I was working on logos and, and design for, for different things. So I worked on like logos for Raekwon, I worked on stuff for, for the alcoholics. I don't know if you remember that, that group. Of course. Um, so I did a lot of, a lot of stuff like that. And then in that label, they were coming up with a dot com way back in the, in, in the early two thousands, websites weren't a thing, right? So a record label created this thing called AKA.com. And it was like the biggest hip hop online publication. So it was started out a lot of records and I was a designer there. And I, I was always looking at those people like, that's the future. That internet stuff is what I want to be in. So I went and I interned there. So there I did web stuff. I, I met a lot of people. I, I learned how to code websites. I didn't go to school for that. I went to school for animation. But then when I went and I learned about um, the online, the future of the internet, it really like set me off like, okay, this is the future, future. So what I did was I self-taught myself. I taught myself how to code, how to um, make websites, make animations on the web, make apps, make games. So I ended up going and I worked on, um, I worked on JLo's first clothing line website. I worked on Lil Wayne's first website. He was like 15 years old, just 20 wow. years ago. Um, I worked on websites for um, the Wu-Tang Clan, all, all, all this crazy stuff. Um, Russell Simmons, Baby Fat, all these different, like early on in hip hop and internet, I was involved in a lot of it. So, but funny stories is like, I, as a young person from the from the hood, I was from the Bronx, right? I, I didn't know technology um, was as big of a job as I th as it is now, right? I just thought I had the skill, but every time I would go around to these jobs, there would be very little minorities, definitely little, little Hispanic or black, there was very little. So I, I, I learned that I had to like be very good and then still play a good role in the company. Mm. Um, so what I did was, I've started freelancing around and it's funny because the, the JLo project, they found me through something. I, I don't, I remember how I found them, but they, they brought me into work at this, this, on this, at this company, they were just starting, had JLo as, as the client. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm from the Bronx. This is when, I, so my parents moved me to New Jersey when I, I grew up in the Bronx, my parents moved me to New Jersey when I was about 15, 16. So I still had, I still lived in Jersey and I was traveling to New York to take, to go to high school. So when I got this job, it was in New Jersey and I was from the Bronx and they had the JLo project. So I was, I killed that project. I was doing it. So I was like my, my masterpiece. Right. So what I ended up doing was I made this website so sick. The day I was supposed to present it to JLo, I was supposed to be on a video conference like this with JLo. I used to drive my mom to the bus stop and then go to work. She decides not to go to work that day. So she doesn't wake me up. Oh. So I, I wake up late. I'm, I'm like 20 years old. I wake up late. I drive to the place. They're like, the meeting 
went good. She loved the work you did, but you're fired. <laughs> I was like, wow. You know, I was like, my mom didn't wake me up. And while I'm saying it, I'm like, yeah, that's stupid. Don't say that. <laughs> you know, but it was a lesson. It was a lesson, right? And I kept learning lessons, kept learning lessons. But I, I've been around this technology thing since it pretty much started. And now seeing where we are and seeing where, where I started, now I see that technology, if you're not involved in technology, you're going to be screwed. Going forward, everybody sees we're in homes. Me and Caesar are actually making money from our house right now doing streaming on YouTube. That's because of the internet. And this is the, the future of how it's going to work. So part of why, why um, I want people to know um, about what I do and Caesar, Caesar is um, breaking it down is because you have to start looking at this, this time in quarantine and saying, all right, how do you change your trajectory after this comes out? And I really think more and more people need to understand about technology and opportunity. And, you know, entertainment is part of it, right? But technology layered with, with entertainment is a true, true opportunity. So yeah, um, what else? I've worked on, I worked on stuff for Disney. I worked on, I worked on Toy Story. Um, like all the, the, the Pixar movies, I worked on their advertising for, for the web. Um, I've done a lot of stuff with code animation for many years. And now with Caesar, when I met Caesar, I was always telling Caesar, you, what you're doing is taking advantage of technology, unlike other people that do what you do. So that's why me and Caesar started working together. I said, because I said, you understand that technology is the, the, the jumping point that you can use. And most people don't. So I said, you know, with me helping you, I think we could really take advantage of this. This is when Caesar already was taking advantage of YouTube. Well, you don't see paparazzi on YouTube and you definitely didn't see it back then. Even now you rarely see it. Even what we're doing right now, you don't see paparazzi doing this, right? So that's where I always thought Caesar was an innovator. I was an innovator. And if we work together, we can really create some cool stuff. And right now we are working on something super cool. Uh, it's the way, but... Once yep. we got a quarantine, it'll be ready. Yep, yep. All right, so so this, you got questions? There's some questions on the thing already, but you, you got questions, hit me. No, um, so so Miguel, um, what will you tell somebody that's trying to get into the um, tech world, right? And, and starting off, like 17 year old, wanna make a, 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 a jump into the tech world. Like what would be your first advice to that young man or young girl? Um, right now it's never been easier in the history of the world to get in this stuff. When I, when I was 20 years old, the internet was really brand new. There was even no Google yet. Mm. So Ow. you couldn't even really Google how to do something. You had to like go to Barnes and Nobles, buy a book, read a thick book like that. Like I remember my first ever website, this is hilarious. I graduated high school and I'm in Virgin Mega Store looking at CD covers for designs because I was, I was working at the music, at the record label. So I was always looking at the different label arts. I mean, the, the, the cover arts. Mm. So I'm there and one of my boys comes up to me and he's like, yo, what's up? He's one of my high school friends. And he's like, what are you up to? And I, and I was like, look, I work at this record label, but I'm also getting into coding websites. He was like, oh yeah, my, 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 my sister's boyfriend is a, is a big DJ. He wants a website. Can you do his website? I know he wants to pay $700. Back then I was making not $700. So I was like, yes, I can make it. I've never made a website ever before in my life. Wow. I was learning it, but I didn't know how to do it. I said, yes, $700, you got it. I'll have it for you by next week. I was like, oh man. So I had to run to Barnes and Noble. I bought a bunch of books, had to read these books, do tutorials, but I made the website. Now, you literally can go to YouTube and type in anything and it'll be like a thousand videos showing you step-by-step. Step. There's all kind of free resources, free software, free everything. So it's really about having that like determination to sit there and fight the, the you know, wanting to stop because you're going to want to stop because coding and all this stuff is hard. If it was easier, people wouldn't get paid what they get paid to do. So yeah. you have to get around that, first of all, and then you got to really find something that you like. Like, I actually didn't like coding. I just was doing it for the money. So once I made enough money, I stopped coding and I hired other people to code. But I do still love the fact that I understand it because when I work with people, they can't, 
they can't talk to me like I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm like, nope, that's not really how it works. It works like this. And me and Caesar were on a call yesterday. <laughs> we were talking about a lot of technical stuff about our project, and you see how like how crazy it could be. Yep, yep. Yeah, man. Uh, basically, if I were if I were somebody right now that was getting into technology, I would look into coding artificial intelligence. Mm. I would be one thousand percent involved in that that's all i would be looking at because what's going to happen is right now we have a snapshot of how it's going to look when automation takes over a lot of jobs there's not going to be a lot of jobs that human beings could do better than an ai so if you can code ai that is a job that you are going to be pretty safe with if you can't exactly. it's going to be very very scarce the type of work that's going to be around i, I believe yep. So, so, all right. So Josh is saying he has a story for us to look into it happened yesterday. So we're going to, we're going to give him our text message number. And he could text us and we could talk about it off, offline. Um, Maria. Hey, Maria. Nice Maria, to meet you. Maria. So Maria says, I love technology. Maybe a web catalog of education web 2.0 2 tools a few years ago. Uh, oh, she made a catalog of education. Nice, uh -huh. nice, nice. Good job. Yeah, might be somebody to talk to right there. The teacher, now, I guess good advice would be to be as specific as possible. Web design, front end, Java, VR, and be really good at one, not doing too many things. That's a good point, actually. Glad you said that, Maria, because the way I did it was, I said, I'm going to get really good at this one software. The software at the time that I believed was going to be the biggest thing, which back then it was called Flash. So I was one of the best people in the world at Flash because I said, every day, I'm going to do one tutorial at least. And this was while I was at the record label working on other stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So then I got really good. And that's why they hired me to work on JLo stuff, on all these other things, because there weren't many people that were as good as me at working on that stuff. So I picked that specific software and I got really, really good at it. But then I learned how to do other things. And it turned out that I did, and Flash doesn't even exist anymore. Wow. Uh, so, so you have to kind of keep evolving with the time too. Things are going to keep changing. That's the thing about technology; it moves so fast that you. So have how, to time. how did? Because they just mentioned VR, right? You were one of the first people that I ever known, right, to do VR, VR work, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Explain to them what what that like what that world consists of, because I know people. Some people think VR, virtual reality, they put the goggles on and stuff like that. But explain to them like what what's your your imprint into that into that world. So what Caesar's referencing is, I, I was one of the first people that got into AR, VR, right? So I go, I speak around the world about work. I've worked with Chanel, Louis Vuitton, big brands, Samsung, all these big brands on AR, VR projects. Because in the very beginning, just like Maria was saying, I always picked the thing that I believed would be the future. And I said, I'm going to get really, really good at that before everybody else does. So that's why I'm telling you right now, AI, because AI is that next one. But AR VR was the one maybe 10 years ago that I saw and I said, I'm going to get really good at that. And I'm going to go to all these brands and I'm going to be better than other people. That's how I was able to get into Louis Vuitton Chanel because there weren't many people better than me at it because I had such a lead in working on it. So AR, which is augmented reality, is stuff like Snapchat lenses, um, Instagram lenses. You know, when you hold up your phone and it looks at you and it changes your face. That's called augmented reality. So that changes your reality. Virtual reality is when you put on glasses and you're in this new world, right? So at one point, me and Caesar were talking about doing virtual reality paparazzi. So he would, he would have a person there while he's there filming the celebrity and you can look around and watch everybody, the whole crowd. You know, I, I, we never did it. We also did drones. I was the first person... Yep. So, so when drones first came out, this guy came to my office with the drone and he put it on my desk and he said, what can we do with this? And I was like, all right, show me how it works. He flew it. He flew it over a highway. We were, my office was by a highway. So he flew it from where we were standing all the way to a highway and back. And I was like, holy shit. So I hit Caesar up immediately. I was like, Caesar, 
Do you think you can use drones for paparazzi? I said, I'm coming right over. I, I'm coming right there. I'm coming right there. <laughs> so we, he comes, he looks at the, the drone, and we were like, all right, how can we do it? So Caesar was like, all right, all right, how can we do this? How can we do this? He was like, you know what? Let me go out in the field, and if I see an opportunity, I'll let you know. So a few, like few days later, right? Yeah, a few days. You, you, you at this, um, I think it was Selena Gomez was doing Selena a video Gomez. shoot. Yeah, yep. right. So Selena Gomez was doing a video shoot, but they were blocking everybody from seeing everybody. it. They put up like walls. So Caesar was like, let's bring out the drone. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we flew the drone over the, the, the thing and got the first ever drone paparazzi footage, right? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. That was us. So, and then, yeah. And then right, right after that, right, we we're hyped. We're hype. We like, we like, we're changing the game. We even did an interview with Entertainment Tonight. We did an interview with Entertainment yeah. Tonight with, with um, the different technologies of paparazzi are using now. Because my whole thought with the whole drone thing is fly the drone, especially when it's big crowds. Let's say at the time, Kim Kardashian was like extreme on top of her game. So like she'll come in a hotel and there'll be like thousand people waiting outside the hotel. We'll fly the drone right above the car and get the whole crowd and everybody like that. Instead of me just kind of pushing and trying to get in there, um, the, it, the drone could do all the work for me above the car. So those are the kind of things that I was thinking about doing. And then and then there was a huge, huge fire in um, 117th oh, Street. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. So, so I had an apartment on 116th and Park, that's where I lived. Right across the street, a building exploded in Harlem, and Caesar was like, "That's a huge story." No, actually, what happened was the drone guy us. went. Right? Yeah, he went. He went, and he called us. He was like, "He was like, yo, guys, I'm going to this thing, and I'm gonna fly the drone. What do you think we could do with the footage?" So I was at Red Lobster, you know, <laughs> celebrating my anniversary. <laughs> Right, so my ex partner, but I was still like going away, talking on the phone with him, and my ex partner was in charge of that. He was like, "Yo, I'm gonna talk to him. I'm gonna get the footage and send it to sales, and we're gonna do everything like that." So he flew the drone. Mind you, they never ever seen a drone in the city like this he ever. Flew the drone into the into fire. the fire, into the fire, into the fire of the the explosion of the building. There were, there were people dead and everything from that explosion. But they didn't know it was so it was all rubble. But he flew it right into the fire. Even the helicopters from like the real news stations were like, is that a drone in the fire? And that, that was us. The drone flew so low. Like the like the fire department was doing it. It was like six feet above the fireman doing it. The 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 video footage and the pictures from the drone was exceptional, like it was like no other, right? Nobody ever did this before. Nobody ever did. So, so we were we were in a process of getting the first drone picture of the first news worthy kind of thing for drone to be there and us be the first to be there. Let me tell you son, the amount of money that was coming in <laughs> that people were like, yo, we'll pay X amount of money, X amount of money. It was getting to the point that it was getting to six figures, right? No, so and the sales rep, the sales rep is getting all these phone calls. I'm talking worldwide phone calls. Like she never really get worldwide phone calls. She was getting worldwide phone calls. And the guy with the drone decided, right? He wanted to go off on his own, right? No, In well, that moment. So, so he, this is the key mess up, right? If you have something that you believe is worth money, you need to reach out to someone like Caesar and understand all the possibilities. What this guy didn't understand was once you sign any piece of paper, all rights are gone. So what this guy did was there was Caesar was uh, we were already working on selling all this stuff, right? One new publication came up to him and was like, "Can I just get it to here sign here?" He was like, I'll, I'll give you a few thousand dollars. I forgot it was very nothing. Yeah. He signed it thinking that he could do that and something else. He killed like hundreds of thousands of dollars. He so, so this is how the process went down. He 
for him to sign that and and the, that that person from that publication was so smart what he did with that he made him sign it and he had cash while he's signing it he had a few thousand dollars in the other hand like this in front of him so when he got that money he he got a few thousand dollars so he don't know right so he like oh yeah you know and then he calling us he's like yo how we doing and then we like yo we killing like yo <laughs> yo keep keep getting footage and then we told him that's it don't get no more footage but he didn't tell us until the last minute the sales rep called and was like yo caesar is somebody else there with a drone and i was like nah he was like yo call that guy back again and see what he did i was like what do you mean he was like yo see what he just did because he did something wrong so I called him back. He was like, yeah, you know, I, I didn't think nothing of it. You know, I sent you guys 10 minutes of footage and, 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 you know, you guys got pictures and stuff. I only gave this guy 45 seconds of footage and they gave me like a few thousand dollars. I was like, you know what you did with those few thousand dollars? You killed over a hundred, over a hundred thousand dollars worth of footage. You know what I'm saying? And right there, I lost communication with the guy. I lost respect because, <laughs> because he wasn't listening to us. And he, that greed just settled in and it, it was just, it was bad. It was bad. It, it was bad. It was bad. But yeah. Go ahead. No, well, well, Maria said, okay, so here's the lesson. Always have paper and cash with you. <laughs> the uh -huh. real lesson, Maria, is if you have a story and there's, there's actually on the podcast, the, the, the Tristan Thompson, that's another version of that. Like a lot of times not understanding the business, yes. you can lose a lot of money by by just talking to a Caesar and following his instructions, you can you know you can go from zero to very like this guy was gonna have a hundred thousand dollars at least yeah, at least and he had two thousand and that's it yeah and that's where it's crazy so and he went down he went down a slippery a real slippery slope after that he started giving interviews to like Fox Five without even having his own company like re registered company. He was giving, he was showing the drone to news outlets. The name of the drone and that he didn't have a, a contract with the with the drone company. Uh -huh. He didn't have nothing with these drone companies, right? Mm -hmm. So he gave up all his leverage. And guess what happened a week later? Every single news outlet had a drone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That drone, yeah. right? <laughs> and he, he was yeah. done. He was yep. done, never to be found again. You know, so, so this guy, I, I had worked with him a little closer because I was working on technology stuff, and he actually ended up he was working for me a little a little while. So what actually what he thought he was doing was he thought he was growing his personal brand and having people know him as a drone guy. What happened was the FCC or there was some government organization literally called his cell phone. I was sitting right next to him. The, they call, the government called him and was like, do you know flying a drone in New York City is illegal? And he was like, there's no laws. I looked up, there's no laws. They were like, I'm telling you it's illegal. Stop doing it. So he did, so he hung up the phone, he tells me, and I'm like, oh man. So he starts growing and now he has a drone company. He makes like underwater drones. You know, of course that money would have helped him in that case. But the, the real lesson I believe out of that was you're going to innovate. You're going to have once in a lifetime situations. You have to listen to the pros, like make sure you have subject matter, matter experts that you're consulting. Like he consulted me about how we, he should use this drone. I consulted Caesar, but then when it came to time to make this big money, he didn't listen to the person that he should have listened to. And that's, that's a big problem. And, and I think, you know, a lot of people now, you know, you can learn from mistakes, right? But that was a once in a lifetime thing. You're never gonna get that opportunity again to be the first ever, first ever. ever. And and you know, we took advantage of it with the first ever paparazzi footage yep. with Selena yep. Gomez. You yep. can see it's on YouTube, right? No, 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 it wasn't. I, I still I still got it. I, I I'll put it up. A lot of the stories that we're gonna be saying, we're gonna be unleashing it um this week on our YouTube. Um, I'm just putting it all to kind of together. Um, but yeah, entertainment tonight. I think you could look it up on, I think you could Google it. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, first, first paparazzi drones. Um, and, and, uh, we, we had to go on entertainment tonight and show them the drone. You know, yeah. we bought our own drone yeah. and we showed them the drone. I think we had 
to fly up. The, we we had a I think we had to fly the drone up, but everything the whole segment was about innovating and and being the first one to 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 have drones. You know, <laughs> and at the end of the day, what we're heading into is called the innovation economy. What, why I work with Caesar is because I saw him as being an innovator in his industry and I was an innovator in mine. So I said, all right, that's a good combo. Going forward, I believe most careers will come from being innovators, being innovative or being an innovator. So that doesn't mean you have to create something from scratch. It's about looking at opportunity and saying, oh, this is an opportunity to be one of the first people to do this. So that's where, you know, I think, wait till you see what me and Caesar are about to unleash, <laughs> an innovation like never yeah. seen. Yeah. Uh, so, guy, you got any questions? Okay, uh, Maria said, good tip. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, you need to tell the young people, and tell that to young, ambitious people. Great advice. I uh, maybe your age, Miguel. I'm 40. 41. I, I stopped counting at 25, but <laughs> whenever I think about it, I, I remember my true age. <laughs> I'm I'm forty I'm forty two so yeah 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 um, but yeah, young, I, and and where I see it going is VR is gonna get bigger and bigger. Think about what's happening right now. Imagine if you know we're all stuck home. Imagine you could throw on VR glasses and travel to Paris or travel to wherever and get that feeling of being outside of your house. So um sorry my son I got my son here. Um, you know, so the idea of technology is only going to scale and scale and scale. Um, I think what people have to start doing is just start finding how, how they can get involved in it. Now, everything is code. That's another big misconception. You know, technology, you have to learn how to code. Most of the jobs in technology are not coding jobs. Coding is just one job in technology. So I'm even, I'm, I'm actually about, about to create a course called AI for coders and non-coders. So if you are a business owner like Caesar, you want to understand AI, but you don't really know how to start. I, I wanted to create something for people that, in that aspect because I know most people are not going to want to code it. If you do want to code it, I'm going to have something for you too. But most people are not going to want to code it, but everybody needs to understand it and it will benefit you the more you understand it. This is going to be the biggest technology ever created by humans. It's crazy if we don't take advantage of this. Mm. So remember the Pokemon frenzy. So yes, so that's augmented reality, the Pokemon. Yeah. So if Caesar remembers, he came to my office and I showed him that same thing seven years before yeah. Pokemon. Yeah. Right? yeah. And I was like, look, there's the future. And, and he's like, I don't even understand what I'm looking at. What the hell is this? And I was like, dude, this is the future. I'm telling you. And we were working on, we were working on that stuff for IHOP, Nickelodeon, like I said, Chanel, Louis Vuitton, because again, I, I said, all right, I'm going to innovate and I'm going to bring it to these big brands. So Maria said last November, I listened to Malta, how they, how they use VR to train people for construction, machinery, and dangerous jobs. So that's another thing, training. The human learns by doing. But doing certain things is dangerous, like you said. I, I met this company because welding is one of the, the most expensive jobs. But when you learn how to weld, you start, your eyes start to lose, you know, sight because you're looking in light. Wow. So the way, what they were doing is training people in VR because all that time in training, they don't damage their eyes. Wow. So, that, wow. so there's going to be things like that that start to come around. Then there's, for, with augmented reality, there's things where you can look at a car and it tells you, this is what you got to take out to remove the engine. So you don't even have to be a super pro. You just need to look and it'll tell you step-by-step step what to do. So all these technologies are, are going to be available for entertainment. Um, I think VR is going to be huge for entertainment. Um, you see you know, it already, yeah. you see it like, like the basketball games, look at the basketball games, right? They, they, they start to do VR. You could be front row seat at the, at, you could do. You could be front row seat at a basketball game, Laker game, and and be right there with with LeBron James on, on top of you. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so that was an idea we had, but of course we didn't have access to that to the NBA. We had that idea years ago because what we said was one of those seats, that front row seat, is worth let's say twenty five thousand dollars. That's a lot, right? But if you told the whole world you could have that seat for fifty dollars. 
Yep. And you can have a million people in that seat for $50. Yep. That's $50 million okay, for that yep. one seat, you know? Yep. And that's how you got to think about technology. It's so scalable, you know? And that's where the future, the future is going. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go. It's really up to people who are in the industries to find solutions to problems and then work with people like me and Caesar and people like that that can bring it to life, you know? I'm already I'm already seeing it right now with, with this kind of disruption. I'm gonna see it in the school system. They're gonna be some kind of VR, like you're in the classroom, actually, and then you watching the teacher and they're in their rooms doing whatever the work is. Um, you're gonna see a lot of innovating stuff in the school system after all this stuff happens. You know, that's after the, yeah. I, I, that's the best part of what is what's going on right now. I believe it's forcing humanity to understand where technology is right now. I feel like a lot of the conversations I've had with brands and, and agencies and people is educating them on where we are and why are they not closer to this, where it is. Now everybody's forced. Like everybody is like, oh my God, I can't work without. So what is available? Now I'm gonna let me look it up. And I'm getting a lot of calls now. So like, I'm busier than ever because people were like, all right, yeah, you were right about that. How can, how can we move now? We need it tomorrow, you know? So it's just a good time to now start to understand the future, how the future is going to look and how you can be involved in it because a lot of people are going to lose their jobs. So if you know that, why not start figuring out how, what kind of job and what you want to be doing once it's over and figure it out right now. We got the time. We got 30 days at least, you know? Yep, yep, yep. So any other questions for me or Caesar? Um, uh, oh, oh, we got something new for everybody who's here. Yes. We're yes. going to involve technology and you guys, the people who are talking to us. Yep, yep. If you're interested in being on the show, like me and Caesar, seeing us visually, if you want to be seen visually, we're going to allow you to be on the show with us. We're going to give you a number to text message us. If you want to be on the show, Text message us, I want to be on the show. Josh, I know you have a story for us. Text message us that story. I'm going to put up the number right now. Uh, so, Caesar, tell them, tell them what, 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 you, what we're thinking. So, this is what we're thinking, right? So, tomorrow we got a live show tomorrow. Um, uh, we got Ari Sky tomorrow. She's going to sing about five different songs. Uh, she's going to probably sing one uh, just... Uh, a cover song and then she's going to sing uh, four original songs so we're going to have her tomorrow but tuesday what we're thinking about doing is have the fans at least three fans that watch her, watch us all the time um to come on the show with us and and be part of the show you know and and ask us questions live and just be part of the the, the show yeah yeah so I know, I know some people don't like being seen, uh, <laughs> but if you're interested, yes. uh, yeah, we want to we make sure we start doing like what we did yesterday with those fans. We want to do it with anybody who's, who, who, who comes a lot and wants to talk to us and, and talk to the, 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 everybody else. Um, yeah, so right now, also another big technology jump is podcasting. That's why me and Caesar created a podcast. Podcasting is going to be the future YouTube. Remember I said it. Podcasting is the easiest way to get information anytime while you're doing other things. Like right now, you guys are watching us on YouTube. Thank you for being here. But you have to be sitting, watching, listening to us. What if I told you, you could be just listening to us while you cook, clean, drive, work out. That's what podcasts allows you to do. So podcasts are, is an easy way to consume information. That's why we're innovating for podcasts too. We're creating the first ever paparazzi podcast because that's what we do. We try to innovate. And by innovate, we try to do things that nobody's ever done before using technology. So, so and like I said, another plug, we're going to have another cool thing in about a month that, uh, that, that'll also be another innovation. So, yeah, I don't know. You want to, you want to give any last words or you want to, any other questions? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so yeah, we, we've been doing the podcast thing right now for about, I want to say a little over a month and a half now, Miguel. Yeah. Um, 
So the podcasting, and Miguel always been telling me this. He was like, yo, Caesar, man, yo, your stories are way more than your videos and stuff like that. And and we need to take your stories to like some kind of platform. You know what I'm saying? So we were thinking about videotaping me, talking about stories, like storytelling and stuff like that. Pretty much like this, but but we could ask questions and do more question stuff through here. But I still give you a lot of my stories here too. But it's nothing like podcasting that you could sit there and really reveal and, and put in your research and everything like that and really put out from your heart like what you have been feeling during that time and 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 all the stories that I have in my head right now it's just crazy and to put it out there in podcast form you know people have been just loving the stories and loving the fact that you know I am who I am yes but loving the fact that I'm telling these stories you know so it's the first time I ever revealed any any of my story other than my closest friends so we've just been doing that and it's been exciting and fun yeah we've been it, it's it's been it's been a crazy kind of time right now a month and a half doing it so so what we're finding is i forgot this is for us numbers only to text us so if you want to be on the show you're gonna have to dm caesar you want to give them where where they should find you or so so after the show is done you, you definitely i mean you definitely could dm me dm me at 24 7 paps um, email me, email me at 247paps.tv at gmail.com. You know, um, you could, you could just hit, hit, hit me up there. I, anytime we're going to get on the show for Tuesday, we could send you the link through that and yeah, you'll be on the show for Tuesday show. All right. So, okay. Twitter's cool. If I decide to join, I will DM you shy Maria. Don't be shy. Um, Everybody, Josh, try to be on with us. Uh, Beatrice, who else? Who else comes a lot? Of course, Charles is going to be on with us tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow. Yep. Tom, Jerry, what's up? Get on, get on with us. Um, yeah, so, yeah, good show. Glad I got to tell you a little bit about what I do. Um, I definitely think we are in one of the best and worst times in the history of the world. Worse because of the pandemic, but the best, if you are a person that doesn't know what to do with their lives or is creative or has an idea because the world just gave you a month to figure it out, work on yourself or work on your idea. So don't waste this time, spend it. Spend it doing what you need to do to make sure when this is over, you're in a better position than when it started. That's my final word. Caesar, what you got? Yep. Um, same thing, um, bring value, right? Bring value to what's going on right now. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we're not promised a job. We're not promised. So bring value, something that you ever, you know, you, you wanted to do for, for months and years, you know, look into yourself and figure out what your passion is and, and put it into some kind of content. You know, if it's not video, do a podcast. If it's not podcasting, figure something out write a book you know what i'm saying like well you could write a crazy novel you know if you're dope with the writing just figure figure out what your passion is and just go with it you know and and again you what, 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 you should maybe think of something because i just i just did a podcast today i didn't release it yet i have to but what i what i spoke about in my podcast which is the miguel sanchez universe yes, that's what i was about to say plug your <laughs> Yeah, if you if you want more information, stuff like that, Miguel, let them know. Put it put it in right up there. Because Miguel has his own podcast. That's really, really good. So plug it. And M I G is M Sanchez's world. Um, so what I was talking about today on my podcast is this is my third recession. This is the third recession that I've seen as an adult that I had to work through. The first one was in the 2000 time. This is when I was an intern and working at the record label time, right? What I learned out of the, these three recessions is your personal brand, the faster you work on that, the faster you get jobs or money. So what I didn't do in the first two recessions was have a personal brand. So even what me and Caesar are doing right now is we're telling you our stories, which is what branding is. Branding is just you understanding our story and if you like our story, you like us and you want to work with us. Branding, 
right now in this time is everything. And I'll tell you, whoever you are, create a podcast, create videos explaining what you do, because it's much more likely that once this is over and millions of people are giving resumes in, but you're the one who's making videos about what you do, that these people will reach out to you and, and you'll have multiple job options instead of hoping somebody sees your resume in the sea of resumes. So right now is the time to learn how to personally brand yourself, do stuff like me and Cesar are doing right now, create a podcast, put yourself out there because I'm telling you when the jobs come back, it's going to be a fight for those jobs, but the people with the best personal brands won't have it so hard. So that's, that's, that's my final, final. Up. Amen. Yeah. So again, um, this pandemic is crazy. Um, you know, I saw just uh, just a little while ago, China was trying to open up for four hours some of their main kind of parts, like uh, their, their equivalent to our Empire State Building, um, try to open up for four hours. They had to shut it down so fast. As fast as they opened it up, they had shut it down that fast because the pandemic, there was a couple of people that had it and they had to shut things down quick. So... Um, and the only, reason China knows, only reason China knows they have it is because they have technology. They're scanning yep. the crowd and, and they know who has a fever. Yep. The crowd. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, so, and China's so far ahead of us technology wise. Um, but I'm just letting you guys know we, this could be 30 days because this could be two months. This could be four months, right? Why not build your brand now? You know what I'm saying? Like, start tomorrow. If you're a cook or you, you know, like Maria, she, with the teaching and stuff like that, start teaching online. You know what I'm saying? Like, do, right do now, it. teachers teachers are lost, right? Like, all these teachers that have been in a classroom now have to go online, and they don't know what to do. Yep. Like, I'm literally helping my sons with their school stuff because teachers don't know how to navigate technology yet because they haven't had to. So if you could teach teachers how to operate right now, you'll get a bunch That's of you. a whole different lane. So Miguel's throwing plugs after plugs after plugs. Yeah, 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 100%. You know, so, but again, right, um, please, you know, work on your brand, work on yourself, you know, teach yourself something, you know, even if it's Spanish, right, teach yourself another language, you know, like, make yourself, a, a, you know, put yourself in another level, because there's going to be so much more opportunity if you work on yourself. This is the, more than ever, you have more time for yourself than any other time ever, ever, right? Like you go to, it's so much that we do every single day when this wasn't around that you, your mind gets lost. Now you literally concentrate on yourself. Don't look at just Netflix and movies and stuff. That, there's time and places for that. But yo, read, read a full book in like two, three days, right? Re, do something that's going to benefit you when this thing is over, right? And then you can move on from there. You know what I'm saying? And get into a habit. You know what I'm saying? I, I got to get into a habit myself. That's working out. But uh, any, everything else, like what me and Miguel are doing, we, we promise ourselves we're going to be, even if we don't have to talk about, we always got something to talk about, but we on here until this whole thing falls. Every day. Every I, day. And we're still trying to keep it going after, but I don't know if we can do it every single day. But until this pandemic is over, we're going to be on every day. Every that's single day. Unless I get sick. <laughs> Even if I'm that's sick, I'll do, I'll do it from my phone. I'll do it from my phone. I'm going to be like, yeah. I'm gonna be like this. In, the, in, the, in the ventilator. In the, in the ventilator. <laughs> we doing that. Yeah. Right? So Josh already hit me up. Josh is no joke, man. <laughs> right, right. That's what I got. So I definitely see that any last words. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Definitely. And for coming back every day. And please come on with us next week uh, on Tuesday. To definitely come on with today, but tomorrow we're going to have a special show, 8.30, 8.30. Um, we're going to post it all over our social media, all over the place. But 8.30 tomorrow, we're going to have a special show, Ari Sky. She's going to be singing for you guys. She's incredible. And, yeah, she's going to be on tomorrow. All right. Peace. Peace.